My friend Jamie came over. The first thing she said when she walked through my door, I am giving up plastic straws. She had just seen my TED Talk where I shared how my family and I refused straws to fight plastic pollution, and she was really inspired. But as she shared her commitment with me, she was holding a plastic water bottle. <laughs> that was two years ago. And at that time, the idea of refusing single-use plastic was still fairly new. Since then, cities have banned types of plastic, and countries have announced plans to phase out single-use plastic entirely. I know that my small talk was part of a bigger, global, activist movement that really inspired massive change. But in the weeks and months that followed, having hundreds, maybe even a thousand conversations with friends and family and acquaintances and online, just like the one I had with Jamie, I realized there is so much more to be done. You see, I had used straws as an entry point for a bigger conversation about how plastic in the environment is breaking down into microplastics, how microplastics are shedding from our clothes when we wash them, and how these tiny pieces of plastic are working their way up the food chain to the point that today, 83% of tap water and 93% of bottled is contaminated with microplastics. And perhaps most concerning to me as a mother of three is the fact that today 99% of Americans, including infants, test positive for the chemicals found in plastic. But the thing that people seemed to take away from my talk was, don't use straws. So as I sat there with Jamie, I had a little debate with myself. Should I point out the contradiction between giving up straws and still using bottles? Should I warn her that her bottle was probably leaching hormone-disrupting chemicals into the water that she was drinking? No. I wanted to support her. I wanted to embrace her baby steps. So I thanked her. And when she was finished, I took that bottle and I put it in my recycling bin. And later, when I was taking those bins out to the street, that's when I realized trash is ruining recycling. Let me explain. <laughs> this is a picture of my great-grandmother, Bess, she was born in 1899. When Bess was young, she and her family burned a lot of their trash in a backyard incinerator. In the 1920s, trucks began taking her trash to the landfill. Trained by two world wars, my great-grandmother knew how to conserve valuable materials like metal and glass, even plastic. But in the 1970s, she was told to put those into a recycling bin, just like I did with Jamie's bottle. Each week, she could take her bins out to the street. Miraculously, someone would pick them up, take her trash away. She never had to think about it again. Incineration, landfill, recycling. These are the systems that worked for people like my great-grandmother who lived in the 20th century. And these are the systems that are completely failing us today. 2.2 million tons of greenhouse gases are emitted each day from open landfills and dumps. Incinerators produce toxic ash and particulate matter that contaminate the communities in which they're located. And that brings us to recycling. So most people think that the number on the bottom of a plastic product means the product is recyclable. That number, that's just telling us what kind of plastic it's made from. What's recyclable depends on so many factors, including where a product is recycled and what the market value is for that plastic at that given time. Our system 
of putting everything into one bin, known as single stream recycling, makes our trash dirty and really difficult to process. We recycle less than 10% of our plastic. And because we are trashing so much of this material, we have to continually make more. This chart shows the rise in increase in production from 1950 to 2014. We made more than 300 million metric tons of plastic, and the numbers just go up from there. Production is expected to increase by 40% over just the next 10 years. And to put that in perspective, the weight of human beings on this earth is about 300 million metric tons. We are literally manufacturing our body weight in plastic every single year. Most plastic is made from fossil fuels, oil increasingly fracked natural gas, and these products are heavily dependent on natural resources. It takes six liters of water to make one half liter bottle of water. Most people don't think of plastic as connected to climate change, but in fact, at every stage of its life cycle, from extraction to production to disposal, plastic contributes to the climate crisis. In 2019, greenhouse gas emissions from plastic are projected to equal those of 200 coal-fired power plants. For decades, developed countries like the United States have been exporting the plastic we collect for recycling to South and Southeast Asia, where cheap labor made processing it economically feasible. Until 2017, when China stopped accepting our dirty plastic, other countries followed suit, in some cases literally turning ships around and sending them back to their port of origin. And what that means is that plastic that we are so carefully separating and putting into our recycling bins, like I did with Jamie's bottle. It's being landfilled and incinerated, just like any other trash. This mismanagement means we're leaking a lot of plastic into the ocean, more than 8 million metric tons every single year, and it's why scientists now predict that by 2050, there will be more plastic in our oceans than fish. Now, the problem with plastic in the environment is it doesn't biodegrade. So unlike a truly biodegradable thing, like a banana peel, even plastic made from plants, which is marketed as biodegradable or compostable, typically doesn't compost without industrial composting. So in your backyard compost, in the landfill, uh, you know, in the environment, in the ocean, it's breaking down into those tiny, toxic microplastics, like any other plastic. Pandora's box, it's open. We can't unlearn this information. This year, for the very first time, studies showed that Americans are more worried about plastic pollution than we are about climate change. And companies are beginning to realize that in order to better manage the way we make, use, and dispose of plastic, they have to extend their responsibility to the entire life cycle of the products and packaging that they produce, which is why we're seeing some really interesting innovation, like Produce tattoos, because don't you hate having to peel off those stupid little plastic stickers, right? Scientists have figured out how to chemically recycle plastic that doesn't damage the environment, contribute to climate change, or depend on fossil fuels. Engineers have designed washing machine filters to capture those microplastics that are coming off of our clothes. Some companies are upcycling ocean-bound plastic into their supply chains. Others are moving away from plastic and back to perpetually recyclable materials like glass or aluminum. 75% of aluminum 
ever mined is still in use today, which means it's not in our landfills. For products that only come in plastic, buying bigger saves plastic and money. We can now choose between containers made with 100% post-consumer recycled plastic or difficult to recycle packaging like plastic bags. In some stores, we can buy in bulk or refill, which eliminates the need for packaging altogether. There's no silver bullet, but these are all part of a solution and they can't succeed unless we support them because it's all about supply and demand, right? We have to stop demanding unnecessary single-use plastic products and companies will stop supplying them. It's as simple as that. So here's where you come in. Let's make using unnecessary single-use plastics look as wrong as wearing a fur coat. <laughs> Experts say it takes 21 days to establish a new habit. So here's my challenge to all of you. For the next three weeks, refuse unnecessary single-use plastics and please don't stop at straws. Don't think of it as one avoided plastic water bottle. Think of that water bottle as multiplied by seven billion people. Carry reusables with you so you never have to take plastic on the go. Share what you're doing with your family and your friends and acquaintances and online with the hashtag plastic free. Because it's not about straws, right? We have to change the system. This, this is so 20th century. And together, we can build a cleaner, healthier future. Thank you.